Easy enough, perfect. Great, okay. So anyhow, IMED Radiology, yes, it's the largest provider in Australia. Um, we service, you know, greater than 250 clinics. We've got a significant number of referrers, as you can see. Um, we do around about 5 million examinations per annum, and a lot of that is actually complex imaging and so forth. We have a lot of MR scanners all across Australia, um, some in regional areas as well. We have over 350 radiologists, and at the moment we estimate we do around about 24% of all imaging in Australia. So, you know, putting that in context, what does that mean? Well, it means that, you know, people like to be, you know, uh, vendors for us because we have obviously a lot of patients. If a uh, machine company, if, you know, if we have, if we like Canon, it means we buy a lot of their equipment. If we like Philips, we buy a lot of their equipment and so forth. But also it means that presently, you look around conference centres like this, and what is about a quarter of the floor at any of these large conferences now? It's all about AI. Now that's good for a company like us, but at the same time, it can be a problem because if every, there's a saying in Australia, every man and his dog. If every man and his dog is coming to you every week or two to our chief medical officer or to other senior people like me and saying, hey, we've got the greatest AI product in the world and we want to stick it in your system. Now the first thing we say to that is, we don't want anyone touching our system because we're so big that already our PAX is temperamental at times and times. So it's more a thing of how did we get involved with Carpal or vice versa because we don't want anybody touching our system. We want to try and have everything as external as we can, but still to be able to test and use AI um, and see what works for us. So that's really the context. So we are one of the first companies in the world to adopt AI. We have um, uh, AI products from several vendors um, at present, and uh, which includes, uh, we use Rapid, we use Annalise, uh, a couple of other products as well. And um, we did actually invest in Annalise as a startup. As you know, AI needs data, we have lots of data. Um, but what's the, what's the main problem? The challenge of scale. And that goes, I suppose, both ends. If you're a practice where there's five or ten radiologists, well, you don't have much resource in the way of, you know, how do we figure out which is the AI that works for us or that we would like. Um, if you're a mid-sized company, you may be starting to get resources, but again, you might not be there. And then, again, you have a company our size. Well, how do you validate your models, track your performance in such a large organisation? Right? IT, security, legal, multiple user interfaces. We would, we would love to say that we're homogeneous across the country, but we're not. We run on Televiewer, Visage, we run on Comrade. So, you know, how do you actually put all the AI in and still have everything functioning properly? Um, and these folks in IT, anytime you suggest changing anything, they get very, very sweaty. <laughs> you don't want to have that happen. Right? So we actually, a few years ago, we actually started with a steering committee and also a pilot team. So we actually have a number of radiologists who have dedicated time and our IT people uh, and so forth that are actually specifically into AI. We meet every month to discuss products and so forth and how we go about testing them, looking at them. Right? Um, so yes, radiologists, nuclear med physicians who work within IMED. And there's a lot of our people who are very interested. Um, some of the young people are particularly keen, but we very specific in having people across the spectrum to do that. So, what does Carpal at least enable us to do? Um, it gives us that concept of at scale AI deployment, right, from enabling access in the first place, looking at pilot projects because we do nothing at IMED without actually doing a pilot on it. We have a division called Itelirad. Um, Itelirad is a mainly an emergency and remote imaging um, part of our company. We have a high rate of pathology in it, and that's generally where we do our pilot testing because it's an enclosed environment and we have very interested radiologists who are happy to be involved in that. Right. So we have super users for any of these projects like a chief medical officer, Infotech, a steering committee, and various modality experts. Like, just say it's a large vessel occlusion stroke product. Myself and a couple of others, we're neurointerventional and uh, vascular radiologists, will be involved. 
So we choose people to do that, right? So here's one of the most important aspects that reflects why we've found Carpal very useful. There are hundreds of AI developers and researchers and so on, right? How do we keep track of it? And how do we possibly test it safely? We can't do that in our environment. So this Carpal is an environment that we can actually you know, manage to do that safely. So we run them live on our data right, to look at how they work for us and clinical value. We can explore how they work. We test and monitor them. Right? We do analysis on it because we don't want to spend the money on a grand scale unless something is really, really valuable to us and our radiologists and gets a better result for our referrers and our patients. Okay? Um, and then you can deploy it into our risk packs using the interface for multiple AI systems rather than our doctors opening up you know, their packs and having seven different windows come up everywhere and confuse them. So that's, that's again how Carpal works for us. So discovery of AI solutions. Um, in all honesty, we don't want you know, every AI company coming to us and incessantly bugging us about things. If someone does, uh, or at least they present it to us and they, we think, oh, it's interesting. Well, if it happens to be on Carpal, we'll go, okay, great, we can test it out. Alternatively, Carpal might come to us and say, hey, look, we've got this new vendor out there. We think it's good. It's worked on our system. You know, some of our other smaller uh, clients have tested it out and they think it's good. So, great. That's how we would, that's how we would start with it. Um, validation and monitoring. Okay, so... You can perform clinical and statistical analysis, right? ROC curves, confusion matrix for the findings, so forth. Um, that's of high value to us because, again, we're not a five-person practice. We need to be able to talk to our insurers, risk management. We also need to be able to talk about hospital contracts, people, and say, hey, the hospital comes to us and say, we've heard this AI thing. Everyone's seen the article saying in the paper about, oh, if you dual read a mammogram now with an AI uh, product, you get a better result. So a hospital that we contract to comes to us and said, hey, are you, are you using AI for this? We, we might say, no, we're not, but we're testing it. But we're only going to use it if we can analyze it properly, which Carpal allows us to do, and then say, yes, we are prepared to use it, we're prepared to pay to use it, and we think there is actual proper benefit for our patients and referrers. Until then, we don't touch it. Well, um, yes, deployment, very advantageous for us because it's a single viewer. Um, again, PAX agnostic, uh, and you don't really want your radiologists who are already you know, stressed, overworked, well, hopefully not all of us, but, um, but you know, at the moment, there are a shortage of radiologists around the world. Uh, certainly in Australia, we know. US, I think it's the same in Europe and Asia. And anything that's as seamless and stresses people out least is also a good thing. Um, there we go. So vendor neutral, third party commercial applications, multiple. Uh, here's just a, one particular uh, version. I'm not promoting any specific AI company ever, but just showing you that this is, this is how it comes up on the Carpal system. Um, you know, it's, it's easy. You can scroll up and down, use what you need, um, have it come up. Radiologists use it, great, move on to the next case. Very, very seamless. Workflow isn't, um, workflow isn't compromised. Um, no imaging practice is the same. Again, you know, the tool enables you to determine the optimal AI threshold. So talking about areas under curve, statistical analysis and so on. We've had large radiology companies for Annalise, the practice I work for, or the AI I work for, saying, hey, we've got 35 uh, outpatient imaging facilities. We want our settings low. We want sensitivity low. We don't want to have every single scan come back as possibly this, possibly that. But at the same time, we have six hospitals, which are all trauma hospitals, and we want the bar set higher. So you can actually you know, analyze that and potentially if your AI product can be, you know, the sensitivities and specificity is altered, you can actually do it in a robust statistical manner on the platform, okay? 
So there you go, testing and validation tool. So I, I think I think what this reflects is that Carpal, when it started, and I don't know all the exact details, but Carpal, when it started, was actually designed purely as a research tool. So hence, all of this stuff is inbuilt in it, as opposed to saying, we're just a platform whereby, you know, you can just use this product if you like it, fine. As a part, whereas, say, you can use the product, but it will do deep statistical analysis of it to tell you, is it actually doing the job you want? Or indeed, how you would ask the vendor to alter the product a bit in terms of how you are using it. Right? That's its research benefits. So, said for us, we use IntelliViewer. Um, you invoke the viewer from inside IntelliViewer. It's all integrated into it. Um, it's fine, it's very easy to use that way. This is another another uh, image of a, another provider who does automatic spine labeling. And you can see it just, you know, comes up very easily. Um, I don't know, do any of you have AI on any of your systems as yet at all? No, okay, well, I said, I, one thing I can tell you from our radiologists is that you do want things to be very, very seamless and come up and not slow anything down. Right? Um, and couple is certainly something that allows you to, you know, just get on with your work. Because the more windows and things that come up, and the more little buttons you have to click, generally speaking, the, um, the, the more irritated your radiologists are. Yeah. And when we have two or 300 of them, I don't want getting phone calls all day from people saying, you know, you put this on the system, but how do I work the damn thing? Right? You want a one-click solution. Another one. Core line A view. I don't know about this particular product, but you know, again, rapid lung cancer screening. You can see how it all comes up very easily. Um, you should have a look at the interface. It's actually very, very. It's it's easy to use. It's fun. Um, does automatic reading, obviously, depending on which product you've got there, coming up quickly. Um, where's our? There's one slide here that we have a comparison or something. One, one of the really good things, I think, about Carpal is you can actually directly compare products. So let's say you have one chest X-ray product and another one, and you think, well, we want to put 100 cases from our practice, and we want to actually run them through the Carpal system. And you'll actually get a readout of one product here and the other product on the other side. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you know, one product is better than the other, but what it can mean is, well, we think this product is better for us because it focuses more on, say, the patient populace or the pathologies that we tend to have in our practice or our region. Um, and that's a highly valuable aspect of Carpal too. And for us, or going back here, for me as a neuroradiologist, if I have a spine labeling program on one side and on the other, and I've got the same MR up there, and I look at one and I say, there is just too much information on this. I don't like it. You know, I've, I've already looked through 10 MRs combined between these two, and one of them is just overload. I don't need it. And I can actually say, well, you know, this is of greater utility for us. But you can actually use your own information rather than, you know, someone else or a couple saying, well, here's 20 specifically curated cases for you. So, no, I want to use my own patient's data. Right? And that's also a, a great benefit, I think. Oh, here we go. So, large vessel occlusion, uh, you know, uh, example. Um, uh, so, this is, well, I think, the last slide or close to it. That's the, this is the actual, the one other really important thing. Even in IMED, although we're a private group, because we have so many radiologists and some also work in university practice, we like doing research. We find it stimulates our radiologists. A lot of our radiologists, you know, work in that university setting too. Um, and a lot of uh, private practices now, we see even the mid-range ones, people like to keep doing it. If you have something like a couple in the back that can do all the statistical analyses on your work, in large volumes, right, it makes it a lot easier to do research. Right? You actually have it already embedded and it can be done for you. Um, and I think that's really, really 
a, a highly beneficial aspect of the product. Um, here's some articles that are done, you know, actually with carpal backing and research. So I think it takes a huge load off potentially because let's be honest, all that statistical analysis and areas under curve and so on, unless you've got a statistical guru or mathematician or whatever at your practice. And for me, you know, I'm a glorified plumber. I don't like doing that sort of stuff. Um, but to have that in the in the background uh, and the option for that is also great for your practice and, and your work. Um, so there we go. I think that's it. So here's the final slide. So again, allows you to evaluate the accuracy and reliability of your reports, report quality, quality assurance, quality control, right? Gives you options for immediate feedback to your radiologists, right? Because you can audit all your reports, right? And auditing again is becoming high, a, a requisite of a lot of contractual obligations. Um, and um, also you can keep evaluating your AI tools. And if something's not working or statistically not doing what you want, it gives you an avenue to feedback to the vendor as well. Uh, and that's that's Im highly important. Just because you buy a product from someone, it doesn't mean the relationship should end there, right? Your AI vendors in the couple should always be evolving with you and with your needs, and you need to be able to analyze it properly. And this allows you to do that. Um, there we go. Thanks.